What is going on guys? Grave here today. Let's talk about the class balance changes that Zoss are looking to make with update 34. Now they listed all this stuff yesterday in the public test server patch notes. And I know a lot of you out there play on console like I do, so you're kind of interested in what is going on with the public test server. Of course, some of this stuff may change over the coming weeks because that's usually what they do. They let you know everyone on PC test it for a week, then they kind of make changes as the weeks go on. But I want to kind of give you guys a overview of what they're looking to change when it comes to class balance and it seems like a pretty good bit of good things i think uh for the game so let's go ahead and hop right into it first of all the engulfing flames morph they reduce the flame damage taken bonus on this morph to a maximum of six percent down from ten percent the total sum of weapon and spell damage needed to reach the cap remains the same when it comes to dark talons the choking talons morph they reduce the cost of this morph from 35 10 down from 40 50 and for the hardened armor morph they increase the damage shield that grants uh the granted from this morph by 24 percent and for obsidian shield for the fragmented shield uh, they increase the duration of major mending granted from this morph to 6.667 seconds at base up from five seconds it says don't worry though it'll reach a nice whole number when you have your internal mountain passive maxed out so that's kind of everything for the dk now when it comes to the necromancer for grave lord uh, the shocking siphon the mystic siphon morph this morph now increases your health magic and stamina recovery by up to 150 while it is active rather than restoring up to 1260 magic over its duration now i'm sure this was a change because of all of the uh you know hybridization options we have in game so they're trying they're trying to make kind of like the video i made yesterday talking about how they're wanting to make all the morphs in game kind of equal when it comes to uh, equal footing i guess when it comes to power level that way you have a lot more options when it comes to building your class for the beckoning armor out of the bone armor and the uh, necromancer class this this morph now attempts to pull valid targets once every two seconds up from every three seconds also uh, the Death Scythe, this morph now deals bleed damage rather than physical. Uh, the morph now applies the hemorrhage status effect on damage dealt, and the morph now sets all enemies off balance on hit rather than every third cast, which will be very handy. When it comes to Living Death, the Expunge Hexproof morph, they reduce the cost of this morph to 1670 at the final rank, down from 1880, and the morph tooltip now properly states it reduced, uh, reduces in cost as the ability ranks up and for mortal coil which is mortal coil which is the restoring siphon uh skill there skill line there mortal coil is the morph the morph now increases your health magic and stamina recovery by, by up to 150 while it's active rather than restoring up to 1260 stamina over its duration so yet again something they're trying to make uh I, I think make more viable for all classes with all the hybrid options we have now available to us when it comes to the night blade piercing mark morph they fixed an issue where the heal from this morph was lower than the base ability and they also increased the duration of the effects to 60 seconds at max rank up from 30. when it comes to the ambush morph uh, from teleport strike they increased the duration of empower granted from this morph to 10 seconds up from three seconds and the morph now also grants minor berserk for its duration for path of darkness for ref uh, refreshing path the morph now also grants minor endurance and intellect for so, uh, four seconds for each tick and veiled strike surprise attack morph fixed an issue where the morph has uh, had no upgrades as it ranked up it will now deal 1.1 percent more damage per rank which is something i think a lot of people will be interested in if they're using a night blade class for drain power which of course is in siphoning they increase the duration of major brutality and sorcery granted from this ability and it's morphs to 30 seconds up from 20 to make up for the fact that it require a target to gain these effects of course power extraction morph the morph now also grants the caster minor courage for 30 seconds upon dealing damage and soul shred they fixed an issue where the ability and the morphs could ignore line of sight in some cases and they fixed numerous issues where the damage or healing from these abilities could use the wrong stats to scale when it comes to the sorcerer uh, when it comes to crystal fragment morph the morph now activates off any non-ultimate active ability cast rather only rather than only magic costing abilities once again something for those hybrid kind of builds and they reduce the proc chance to 33 percent down from 35 percent 
Uh, Crystal Weapon Morph. This morph now causes your uh, next two light or heavy attacks to deal bonus damage up from one. This is a small cooldown on this to avoid the ability to instantly proc both. Um, Crystal Weapon was one I, I think that a lot of people have been talking about lately since all the hybrid options. They felt like it was a little too weak. This may help improve that. When it comes to Summon, Charge, Atro, Morph, the Morph's area of effect damage now always applies the Concussed Status Effect. When it comes to the Boundless Storm Morph, they fixed an issue where the ability's visual effects were not in sync with the combat effects. Uh, Endless Fury Morph reduced the cost of the Morph from 2160 down from 2430 to help reinforce the idea that you're able to endless, endlessly cast it. So that's going to be something, you know, that some players may want to look at on the Sork for, you know, some type of execute now that it cost a bit less. The Overload, uh, Energy Overload Morph. The morph now restores up to 1,200 magic and stamina rather than up to 1,192 magic. The restore now happens anytime you use light or heavy attacks rather than only when you deal damage. Once again, something for more hybrid type options. And for Surge, they fixed an issue where the major sorcery granted from this ability was not ranking up during duration. Um, also, or ranking up in duration, excuse me. Also, when it comes to the Templar, uh, the Blazing Shield Morph, they increased the radius of this morph to 8 meters up from 6 to better match its visual effects. And they also fixed an issue where the damage could fall off or uh, fail to activate in many cases. For Dawn's Wrath for Backlash, they increased the cost of the ability and the Purifying Light Morph to 2160 up from 2000. And Power of the Light Morph, they reduced the cost of this morph from 1337 down from 1700. Also for the Light uh, living Dark, excuse me, in Eclipse, that Living Dark Morph, the Morph's heal no longer scales with stats and instead heals for a base 2,000 health when it triggers. They do have something I want to talk about this. Is they're, they're taking away some of the insane values of healing that that ability can have when stacking with high stats and instead taking a safer route with a flat value to ensure any role of Templar can still engage with the skill but will with less powerful results at the end. Also, for Solar Flare, the Dark Flare Morph, they reduced the cost from 2430 down from 2700. And Rite of Passage, the Restoring Light uh, uh, class line there for the Rite of Passage, the uh, practiced incantan, incantan, I'm going to say that all wrong, <laughs> excuse me, uh, practice incantation. I probably said it wrong still. I can't get it out this morning. But uh, anyway, this morph now allows you to move at a reduced rate while channeling it rather than being unable to move at all. Um, anyway, we'll go on to the warden class. The Templar just absolutely got me tongue tied. Sorry about that. Uh, the animal companion, the uh, feral guardian, the wild guardian morph now deals 10 percent more damage up from uh, or deals 10 percent more damage up from five percent to ensure that it deals similar damage to eternal guardian when you uh, take the piercing magic passive the morph now converts the damage to bleed damage instead of physical and each attack applies the hemorrhaging status effect when it comes to deep fissures uh, the morph now also applies minor breach to enemies hit for the duration when it comes for the green balance line there for healing seed corrupting pollen morph the morph now applies minor cowardice to enemies in the area to help it gain some uh, viability in PVE areas. Also for Arctic Blast, the morph now requires enemies to be damaged five times in order to be stunned up from three. They reduce the duration of the stun to three seconds down from four. And they increase the duration of the stack counter uh, to three seconds up from one. They kind of made a comment on this as well. This is right now the ability is offering too much offensive nature for the warden, allowing them to line up their burst perfectly with scorch or to remove counterplay by increasing the stack count required. This should be less of a guarantee with the combination and require more uh, play from the caster while the increased duration of tracking helps also reduce the ease of counterplay to by backing off for of one second for the warden to completely avoid the stun. Uh, also, they talked about Crystal Shield, this morph, uh, or the crystallized slab part of Crystal Shield. This morph now also stuns the target upon dealing damage. Uh, Frost Armor expanded the radius of this morph to 36 meters, up from 28 meters. And last but not least, Northern Storm, of course, which is the Sleet Storm morph there. Uh, this morph now grants 300 weapon and spell damage for up to 30 seconds after casting, rather than 15% max magic for 30 seconds. This should help. The ultimate be more impactful across playstyles. So as you guys can see, most of the stuff within this 
kind of class balance update uh, within update 34 is going to be really for making all of the classes have more hybrid style options instead of those certain morphs being tailored just towards you know maybe a stem or a mag uh, build they're really going to be tailored towards any build now because every build in the ESO can really be kind of a hybrid style build whether you, if you're just specking into you know pure magic or pure stamina you still can build a hybrid style class with all of these different skills and the different morphs the way you know kind of by the way they work now uh, since update 33 came out so it looks like in update 34 we're going to get more class balance changes that i think a lot of people will really be excited about considering some of the stuff we had in game was not really tailored towards uh working really well with hybrid classes so now it looks like that's going to be something that uh, zoss is really focusing on within update 34. anyway guys leave me a comment with your thoughts of course if you like the video hit the like if you haven't subscribed yet please do so and i'll catch you next time peace